okay? Look at page 15, the third one down. Ralph Gilroy, yes, he's very good looking. Well, he's definitely another possibility. Patty, I don't know what this little tiff between you and Richard is about, but I... It's not a little tiff, and I really don't want to talk about it. All right. But you've only been not talking for two days. Do you think it's a little early to be looking for a replacement? <laughs> Kathy, this is war. It's never too early to build up your defenses. And besides, Ralph Gilroy really digs me. How do you know? When a boy keeps hitting you and pulling on your hair ribbon, that's a definite sign. Your hair ribbon? Back in elementary school. No matter how many times I kicked him in the shins, he kept pulling on my hair ribbon. <laughs> and then, one day, it happened. I knew it was love. What happened? He kicked me back. <laughs> I'd better get dressed. Are you sure you don't want to go to a movie with Freddy and me? Uh-huh. All right, Patty. I understand. After all, Richard might call again, and then you wouldn't be here to refuse his call. <laughs> Kathy, I assure you I'm above that childishness. Well, perhaps Richard has decided to stop phoning and make a frontal attack. He wouldn't dare. <laughs> If that's Richard, you can tell him to go jump in a lake. He's all wet anyway. <laughs> Who was it? Was it Richard? No, but I think he sent you a box of candy. You didn't accept it, did you? Why not? Well, you can throw it in the garbage can for all I care. Throw it in the garbage can? When I'm here? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Paul? Is this... Six two four one zero nine eight. Oh, hi, Richard. This is Ross. Oh, I thought I had the wrong number. Hey, Rich, this candy is great. Candy? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the candy. You mean somebody else sent this to her? Ross, would you ask Patty if she'd please come to the telephone? Switch to the suite. Al Cameron. <laughs> what? Richard. The next time you don't send a box of candy, would you call a guy and let him know? <laughs> Meet Kathy, who lived most everywhere. From Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But The ballet Roos and Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. The hot dog makes her lose control. And what a wild duet. Still the cousins. Identical cousins. Then you'll find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins. This is Ross. Ross, can you talk a little louder? I can't. That's the whole point. Well, how's Patty? Well. Still sore at me, huh? Rich, we hold on a second. Patty! Phone! Patty! Phone call! Patty! I'm coming! I haven't got all day, will you? I didn't even hear it ring. Hello? Oh, boy, is that you, Patty? Who is this? <laughs> it's me, Richard. Hello! Goodbye. What'd you do that for? I told you I didn't want to talk to Richard if he called. Sure, but he didn't call. What? I called him. You... Yeah, and now he thinks that... Oh, how would you like a knuckle sandwich? Don't you flip your wig. I was just trying to patch things up. What makes you think I want to be patched? <laughs> Mom! Okay, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Mom! What's the matter? Do you know what your son the ankle biter just did? He tricked me into talking to Richard on the phone. Well, I think that was very sweet of him, and I think you're going to spoil your appetite for dinner. How can you spoil something that's already spoiled? Patty. 
since you haven't seen fit to confide in me, I don't know what this little spat between you and Richard is all it's about. It's not a little spat. No? What is it? Nothing, Mom. All right, darling, if you don't want to talk about it, that's up to you. Where are you going? Oh, I've got work to do. Don't you want to hear what happened between Richard and me? Well, I'm not going to drag it out of you. You're not? Certainly not. <laughs> Mom, why don't you sit down and I'll tell you. Remember last week when I had a date with Richard at the Shake Shop? I waited over an hour for him. He was that late? He was even later. He never showed up. And then the next day at school, somebody told me they saw him at the library with Cynthia Howard. I see. Did he have any explanation? Of course not. He didn't say anything? Who knows? I haven't talked to him since. Well, dear, I don't think that's a very reasonable attitude. Suppose he can explain the whole thing. It might just be a misunderstanding. You really think so? Well, you'll never know unless you talk to him. That's true. Maybe that's him. I'm sorry, old timer, but all systems are no. Goodbye. Who's that? Richard. Richard? Yeah, and you saw me, Patty. I hung up on him as fast as I could. Ross, I could strangle you! What? Mom! Forty to carry. Four and three is seven. One is eight. Thirteen, eighteen, twenty. Twenty-seven. <laughs> Do you uh, want something, honey? No. How's it all going? Right now, it's quite a mess. Oh. Uh, well, I, I won't bother you. Uh -huh. Twenty-eight, thirty. Thirty. Was that the phone? No, I think that was the timer going off in the kitchen. Oh. Thirty. Uh, well, uh, I, I really 30. don't want to bother you. Four and three is seven. One is eight, 13, 18, 27, 28, 37, 44, 52, 59. Dear, just may a, I interrupt? Just a minute, honey. 59, 66, 74. 74 and six is 80. And nine is 89. And se um, is it really that important? It's about Patty and Richard. 66, 74, 80. Martin. Martin, she's just miserable about the whole thing. If she's so miserable, how come she went out with that cameraman boy the night before last? That just proves that he's shorter than she is. Natalie, that doesn't prove anything. Do you remember the 4th of July just before we got married? When we weren't talking. That's right. And you thought I was so miserable? Well, I dated Gladys Healy three nights in a row just to get even with her. <laughs> Martin Lane, you told me you stayed in your room and read poetry. I did? <laughs> Four and three is seven. <laughs> 18, 18, 27, 28. 28, uh, 37, 40, 40, 40, 40, 52, 52 and 7, Dad, 59. Dad, you busy? Uh, very. 59. Well, is it going to be long? But, uh, no, no, I should be through in a couple of years. 59, 66. Well, all I want 70... is a quick yes or no. It's about getting an advance on my allowance. 72, 78. I'm willing to pay interest 90, on it. 97 and 7 is 100 and Well, wouldn't and you three. want a little extra 100, income? 100 and a... I'll wait until you're through. <laughs> Four and three is seven. One is eight, 13, 18, 13 and five is 18. 18 and nine. Ross, would you get that phone, please? And get my head chopped off again? 18 and 9 is 27. 28. 28 and 9. 28. Why aren't you answering the phone? It might be Richard. That's why I'm not answering it. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yes, he is. Just a moment, please. It's Eddie. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I asked him. No, he wouldn't. I guess you'll have to go to the movies by yourself. Yeah, I know how it is. I don't like to go alone either. You want to come over here and maybe we'll hack around? No. Okay, it's up to you. So long. Change your mind? <laughs> Change my mind about what? Who is this? It's Richard. And Ross, before you hang up, would you ask Patty if she'd please come to the telephone? Okay. Patty, Richard's on the phone. Patty! I'm coming! Here she comes. 
mean she'll talk to me? Yeah, she's dying to talk to you. Ross! Here. No. <laughs> Hang up! Hold on a second, Rich. There's been a little hang-up. <laughs> now what? Did you hear what that little gleep just did? Well, I thought you wanted to talk to Richard. Not if he thinks I'm anxious to talk to him. Martin, would you do something about this? Honey, I hope you realize you're taking a risk. What do you mean, a risk? Well, as your mother will tell you, you can push a man only so far. Believe me, dear, he's right. You think I'm pushing? As your father will tell you, a man has his pride. Even Richard. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, Richard, but I just can't stand to hear a grown teenager cry. <laughs> Ross, don't hang up! You hung up. Holy cow, isn't that what you just told me to do? This is a fine time to start doing what you're told. Oh, what did he say? Did he say, did he, did he say call back? Did he say anything? He said he's coming over. He is? So? Coming over to apologize, huh? I got news for you, pal. You got a wrong misimpression. What do you mean? Richard says that he left his notebook here last week. He needs it, and that's the only reason he's coming over. Well, I got news for you, pal. That's just an excuse to see me. He didn't leave any notebook here. Don't move. In that case, he probably won't even come in. I was apologize. I'm sorry, Patty. It's not your fault, Ross. It's me. How can I hope to compete with a girl as cool as Cynthia Howard? Well, I think you're just as cool as she is. Yeah. Am I just as pretty? Wouldn't you rather be cool and pretty? Thanks a lot. Well, I didn't mean it. Well, as a matter of fact, I think that any boy that wouldn't go for a girl as pretty as you must be out of his tree. Well, that's the first time you ever said I was pretty. Well? Am I? Patty, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard a certain person say so. Richard? No, Mom. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Wait a minute. Why don't you try to make up with Richard when he comes over? He's not even going to come inside. He's just coming over to get his notebook. How about... Suppose you can't find it. Of course I can find it. It's right there. Yeah, but you know how things have a way of disappearing around here. Ross, that would not only be unethical, it would be wrong. Wait a minute, Patty. I think I got a way to make it ethical. How? Well, if I hide it somewhere, you really won't know where it is. That's collusion. All right, how about this? What's collusion? <laughs> I don't know, but it means underhanded. Okay, supposing you tell me not to hide it, and I hide it anyway. That way, I'll collude, and you won't have to. <laughs> Ross, you're a great rat. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I just had another idea. What? I mean, just as insurance. Collusion insurance? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I went to the movies, you wouldn't be able to ask me where I put the notebook, even if you attempted to. Is that really necessary? Well, I'm just thinking of your happiness. Yeah. Yeah, it would be better that way. Okay, that'll be 75 cents for the movies and a quarter for popcorn. <laughs> All right, forget the popcorn. <laughs> You look lovely, dear. Are you sure it's not too much? I mean, I really want to play it cool. Oh, you look great. I'm sure you win first prize. What? Aren't you going to a costume party? <laughs> Papa, for your information, I... it's on! It's on! Patty, don't rush. I love the way she plays it cool. <laughs> Did, uh, did Ross mention... Yes, yes, he said you were coming by to pick up your science notebook. Oh, well, I guess I'll just wait out here then. Um, I'm very sorry, but we don't allow visitors to wait on the front porch, irregardless of whomsoever they might be. What? Come in. That yeah, sure is a pretty outfit, Patty. Well, this, I just didn't have a chance to get dressed. Oh, you're going out? I might. Well, then I better split. But I might not. So, uh, why don't you just come in and sit down? Boy, 
Jan. Sure look pretty, Patty. I do. And listen, Patty, about last week. No explanation necessary. Really? Absolutely not. Where were you? <laughs> what do you mean, where was I? I happen to know you were at the library with Cynthia Howard. I wasn't with her. She just happened to be there. I mean, it's a free public library. Oh, really? And when did you ever go to a free public library except to get warm? And what about our date to meet at the Shake Shop? What's the matter with you, Patty? You were supposed to meet me at the library. What? Yeah, I waited over two hours for you. You did? Circumstances, Richard. I feel there's only one thing I can say. I forgive you. Boy, I sure missed you. You did? Yeah, it seemed like a year, you know? I know. Boy, time sure doesn't fly sometimes. Yeah. Patty, I... Yes, Richard? Holy cow! Time sure does fly sometimes. <laughs> I gotta get that notebook and start cramming for that test on Monday. Today's Saturday. You have two whole days. I know, but I've been goofing off for two whole months. And my dad said if I don't bring my grade up, I've had it. What do you have to bring it up to? Anything that doesn't look like an F. <laughs> oh, really? I gotta go. Could I please have that notebook? Yeah, uh, I think Ross said he saw it someplace. See you later, Patty. Going to a movie. Uh, Ross, wait a minute. Wait. Look. Richard needs, needs that notebook. I mean, he really needs it. You know what I mean? Certainly, Patty, and I sure wish I could help you, but I gotta get over to Eddie's. No, I'm not kidding. He really needs it. Ross! <laughs> That sister of mine is really great when she's putting on an act. You know, for a minute there, I thought she actually wanted that notebook. Do you think hiding in the laundry bag was safe? We'll find it there. Anyone who's looking for dirty laundry. Hello? It's Patty. Hello? Yeah? Oh, Ross, am I glad I got you. Now you listen to me, and you listen good. Richard needs that notebook. Patty, is Richard there by the phone? For a minute there, I thought you were serious. I am serious. Where is the notebook? Boy, Patty, what a put on. Ross, where is it? Keep it up, Patty. Keep it up. You're doing great. Ross, this is your last chance. If you don't tell me where that notebook is, I swear you'll regret it for the rest of your life. You overdid it, Patty. And besides, I gotta go. Bye. Ross! Patty, instead of persecuting a poor kid, why don't we just look for the notebook? You're right. I can always persecute him later. <laughs> Tell you what we'll do. We'll flip to see which movie we go to. No. Now I'm willing to see whichever one you want to. You are? Gee, thanks, pal. The guest should never argue with the host. Hey, wait a minute. Which one am I? You're not paying for us? Eddie, if I had enough money for two, you wouldn't be one of them. Ross, the strong box. He keeps all the valuables in it. Here's some tools. Try and open it. I don't get it. There's nothing valuable about a science notebook, particularly mine. <laughs> You got a hairpin. What do you need a hairpin for? You got all these tools. Oh, I don't know, but that's the way they always open them in the movies. Oh, it's open. Some safe cracker. I don't see my notebook. That rotten little kid. I knew he was loaded and he took my 75 cents and then he ran out on the whole thing. What do you mean he ran out? Well, you saw him, Richard. He just ran out right before your very eyes. Yeah, but what you pay him for? It's something personal. Let's just forget about uh, it. No, wait a minute, Patty. There's something here I'm beginning not to understand. Mom, we're going to check the kitchen. Okay, honey. Natalie, this is ridiculous. We've looked all over the house for that stupid notebook. Well, it's got to be here somewhere. Yeah, but meanwhile, I haven't balanced my checkbook yet. Well, then why don't you go back to it? You don't mind? Go ahead. Okay. Balancing a checkbook is more important than your daughter's happiness. Well, then go ahead. <laughs> Where do you want me to look? Hey, wait a minute. There's something behind here. Is that the notebook? Well, move this a little and I'll try and get to it. Are these the cigars Ross gave you last Christmas? Oh, yeah. You didn't smoke them. I smoked one. <laughs> well, maybe I should raise his allowance. Boy, is he cheap. <laughs> What are you doing? When Ross is old enough to smoke, he's going to get a nice present from his cheap father. <laughs> Check 
Ross's room again. All right. Oh, maybe you should check the basement. Now you tell me. Oh, and Martin, as long as you're going to be down there, would you please take this laundry and dump it into the washing machine and turn it on? I'm sure it's safe for you to show up. Sure. Either they've already made up or they're never going to talk to each other again. You mean that dumb brother of yours hid it now he won't tell you where it is? But I'm trying to tell you. I asked him not to tell me. Well, what am I supposed to do now? Keep your voice down. That's one thing you're supposed to do. Oh, you're right. What an act. That's no act. Come on, let's go get that notebook. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, this is the last time I do anything for... It's not there. Look, do me a favor. Check my room while I check Patty's. What does the laundry bag look like? It's got big flowers all over it. What kind of flowers? How should I know? I'm not a florist. Keep it all. <laughs> oh, hi, Eddie. Is Ross home? Yeah, we're looking for a laundry bag with big anonymous flowers on it. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. About what? Oh, Mrs. Lane asked me to put that laundry in the washing machine. I forgot all about it. <laughs> hey, what are you just standing there for? Why aren't you looking for the laundry bag? Where should I? Your dad found it. Found it? Yeah, he just went down and put it in the washing machine. And you let him? Boy, Eddie, you are <laughs> What do you mean, let him? It's his laundry. Dad, wait! Ross! Dad, you're not gonna get away this time. Richard, you have another let's arm. go. Now you listen to me. Dad, don't put the laundry in. Yeah. Where is that notebook? Get out of there. Ross, you're starting to tick me off. Did you call me Ross? I couldn't hear a thing with that washing machine going. <laughs> What's all this yelling about? Nothing, Dad, compared to the yelling you're gonna hear now. <laughs> quiet in there. Yeah. Either Richard is still mad and they're not talking, or... Well, they're not talking. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen Richard so upset. Well, do you blame him? I think he could have been a little more gracious after we offered to make amends. Yeah. Are you boys coming along? Just about finished. <laughs> Can you read it? Well, it's certainly as legible as it was originally. What's legible? Well, it's the same as collusion, only not so underhanded. You <laughs> gotta keep working. You're not scorching any of those pages, are you? No, Mom. We get the iron set on rayon. <laughs> what about the cover? Forget it. Come on, we better take these into Richard. Richard! Richard! Yeah, Ross? We got your notebook cleaned and pressed. Gee, I certainly want to thank you, fellas. You can read practically everything. That is, everything you could read before. <laughs> Sorry, we got one of these pictures a little scorched. Eddie. Pictures? Yeah, the ones with this girl. Are they in there? You better let me have them. May I see those? Thank you. Well, well, well. The many faces of Cynthia Howard. Uh, no, wait a minute, Patty. Let me explain. When I ran into her at the library, she had these proofs from a photographer. And she asked me which one I preferred. Uh, when I couldn't make up my mind, she said, take them home, decide, let me know. You know, kind of sleep on it. Uh, I mean, uh... Is that how it happened? I swear. I think we better split. Richard. Uh, now, wait a minute, Patty. You said Cynthia gave you these pictures at the library that night. Now, we haven't seen each other since. Would you be good enough to explain to me how her pictures got in your science notebook, which was here all the time? Uh, wait a minute, Patty. You're mixing me up. I'm not mixing you up. You were born that way. Good night. <laughs> now, don't say anything you'll regret. Just go home and think this over very clearly, and when you've got a reasonable explanation, yeah. call Cynthia Howard and give it to her. I'm sorry, Patty. Oh, that's OK, Eddie. Thanks for not being sore. It wasn't your fault. You did your best. Patty, I just want to say that... Who cares what you want to say? I'll never forgive you for this, but I... Never! I'm going home. I'm going with you. <laughs> Where's Ross going? For a walk in space without a rope, I hope. <laughs> Are you sure we didn't get him from a band of gypsies? <laughs> well, I don't think it's fair to blame your troubles on him. No, you're right. It's all your fault. Our fault? How do you figure? Well, if you two had been stronger 14 years ago when I was running around the house saying, I want a little brother, I want a little brother, none of this would have happened. <laughs> Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. The party's only seen the sights of broken people from the heights. What a crazy pair. Times they even talk alike. You can lose your 